a company booked me to do a series of speeches around the country. And when it was over, uh, that gave me an opportunity for the only time in 45 years of speaking to really get to know my clients. At the end of this big tour of 25 speeches, I knew not only the top management team that I traveled with, but I also knew their spouses. And when it was over, I remember saying, I do remember saying, if y'all ever get to North Carolina, <laughs> anywhere near Alamance County Elon University, you just come on, lay it, left brain agree, you just come stay with us. Left brain said, why'd you tell all those people to do that? <laughs> I said, because I've been speaking 40 some years and nobody has ever come to our house before, they're not coming. <laughs> Two weeks later, <laughs> I got a call from a man named Dave Popperwell. He's sitting right here from, this company's in Ohio, but it's a national company. He said, my wife Pat and I, is that not a pretty name? Patty Popperwell, she sounds like a movie star <laughs> or a rock singer. I'm not sure which, which it is, but he said, Pat and I are coming to North Carolina and we're going to take you up on your offer to spend several days with you and left brain in, in your home. I hung up the phone and looked around a house that I had loved for years <laughs> and said, this won't do. <laughs> I know they've got these big houses and I said to Left Brain, we got three weeks to turn this house around. <laughs> we gotta do it. And he said what every woman loves to hear her husband say. He said, well, just give me my list. <laughs> because I was gonna be away speaking most of those three weeks. My friends pitched in. You could hear people all around Burlington saying, the Papa Wells are coming. <laughs> the Papa Wells are coming. I was in the produce section of the grocery store. A woman I've never seen before in my life came up and said, have the Papa Wells gotten here yet? <laughs> it's Papa Well, and who are you? I helped one of your friends pick out the paint for that inside hall that goes down the... So finally, suffice to say, we did everything we could do in this house that could be done in three weeks with a lot of help from friends. And we were ready on Wednesday before the Papa Wells were to arrive from Cincinnati on Friday afternoon. We had to be ready on Wednesday because on Thursday I was going away. This is just so typical of our lives. I'm going away to make a speech. Everything was in place. We had gotten flowers. It was just gorgeous. On Thursday morning, Left Brain said before I left, is there anything else that I need to do today before the Papa Wells arrive tomorrow? And I said, two things. Number one, don't touch those hand towels in the bathroom. <laughs> I mean it, I mean it. I've told you this before and you've ignored it. Those little bitty towels that are hanging there with our initials, you do not touch them. Don't even go in the bathroom. Well, what am I supposed to do all day? Don't go in any of the bathrooms. You just go to the filling station when you have to go. Just get two gallons so when you have to go back again in a little while, you just keep going getting two gallons at a time. And I said, and the second thing is, I noticed some spots on some of the carpets and a couple of the rugs and also clean those up if you can get them up. Now, what I wanted him to do was what we have done before every little party we've ever had in our house. Go into the utility room, get that can, come out shaking it, buddy. <laughs> scrub, 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 scrub. Wait a little while, vacuum it. If the spot's coming up, it'll come up. If not, get an ottoman or a plant, put it right down on top of it. It's odd, people say, excuse me, let me get around this plant in the center of your room. I did not say rent a commercial cleaner and flood the entire house. <laughs> the next night I drove down Forestdale Drive and the lights on my car hit the front yard and my living room furniture was out in it. <laughs> Catherine, I've never told you this before, but uh, because I, I can tell you, it wasn't Mother's sofa, it wasn't Grandma Freddie's sofa, it was our great-grandmother's Victorian sofa was on its end up against a tree. <laughs> I fought my sister for this sofa. She had driven down the road that day anytime and seen that antique sofa leaning against a tree. She could have filed for custody of that sofa. 
They in the court of women in the country wouldn't have said, Catherine can have the sofa. I drove in, the only thing I could think of was fire. House had to have been on fire. I went around to the back, my back yard was full of the furniture from everywhere in the back side of the house. I, well, I got out, I had on my little driving sandals, and I went to the back door of our game room, which is a nice name for old garage with a ping pong table in it. <laughs> and I came in, and there was a carpet, and I put my, put my left foot down and, and tried to pick it up, and I, <laughs> <laughs> and I put my right foot, <laughs> And the door was way over there, and I just, well, it had to be a fire. They've had to must the hoses, all the trucks must have. <laughs> and I got over here and came through and came to the den. And the den has a, a big, big carpet. And, and in the corner of the carpet was something I didn't even know we still had in the attic. One of those small oscillating fans. <laughs> stacks of towels, someone <laughs> thought that this fan was going to rush this water over to that far corner. I screamed, left brain, in the living room. He said, in the living room, we've got a situation, come fast. I went up there, and there wasn't a stick of furniture in the living room. I knew that. I had just seen it in the front yard. <laughs> and towels were all over the carpet. The left brain was... <laughs> You remember that I Love Lucy show when Lucy was stomping grapes? That's what it looked like. He was doing like... When I could speak, I said, Honey, what's happening? He turned right around. I didn't touch those little towels. <laughs> They're hanging right there with the initials out, but we got a situation here where you... You're gonna have to tell me what has happened in this house today. What in the Papa Wells are at home packing their suitcases to fly here <laughs> tomorrow to stay with us? He said, well, what happened is, honey, I did what you told me to do. That's always, I did what you told me to do. I tried to clean the spots up off the ride, rented a machine, and I started with it in the game room. I thought I'd just go through the house, and he said, I, I filled it with water all the way to the top, and I turned it on, and like a fire hydrant, gushed all over the den. I couldn't stop it, it was so strong, so I had to wait till all of it got out. And then I moved the machine into the den, and I filled it up with water again, but I didn't put in as much. I thought it would be, be better, and I did it, and turned it, and it did the same thing again. And so now I'm up here in the living room trying, to, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, time out. Have you ever wanted to just take a person you love's face lovingly in your hands and say, are you in there? You, you give me a sign of life, intelligent life. Let me just get this straight because I'm having a little bit of trouble digesting all of this. This is what you did. You came in the game room and apparently just flooded it. And then as fast as you could, you dragged the machine into the den and did the same thing over again. I didn't use quite as much water. I know, I know. What you drunk. And then moving again, pronto, pronto, as fast as you could, you dragged the thing up into the living room. He said, no, Nancy, right there's where his left brain just kicked in on him. He said, that's not the way it happened at all. I started in the game room, and then I went to the den and then I went upstairs to the bedroom. <laughs> I didn't come in the living room till after I did the bedrooms and I did the, the dining room area. And so the, all this house is completely flooded. The whole house is flooded. You wanna tell me why you felt the need to not only do this, but do it so fast, going from room to room to room. He said, I have a sensible explanation for that. I had rented the machine by the hour. <laughs> Thank you.
I said, well, that's it. We're calling the hotel. We're getting their Papa Wells a room. They're not staying here. They can stay here. They can stay here. They'll never notice it. We can work all night. I've got the temperature on 85, maybe 90. It'll dry it out. I've been working all afternoon. We trust me. I said, they're not staying here. You don't understand. This is a big client left right. He said, no, they're our guests. And I knew he was thinking we'd have to pay for that hotel room. <laughs> I know he was thinking that. And so, now y'all are still in Cincinnati packing, having a good time all night. We are dragging furniture. We are squeegeeing rugs. Milk, temperature, the heat. We work our heads off and the whole time. Every time I pass that brain, they'll never notice it. They'll never notice it. They'll never notice it. You think Dave and Pat Popwell are gonna come in here, hug us, hello, hello, let's see if your rugs are wet. <laughs> They will never notice it. I said, but you did the guest room when they go up there and take their shoes off and put their feet down, they're gonna feel that it's damp. He said, and that's when we pull out that great Southern saying, the humidity. <laughs> oh, oh, Woo. The humidity. I love you, honey, you're my best friend. You talked me into this. So we hurried and hurried, and then when we couldn't have even gotten the Papa Wells and said, don't come. Don't even come. The state of North Carolina's closed down. We've had a trip. <laughs> we were sitting ready with everything back in place. As long as you didn't touch the rug, it was back. And then all of a sudden, 15 minutes before they pulled in the driveway. <laughs> what has happened? Do you smell something funny? <laughs> There's only one word that can be. The house had soured. <laughs> if it had been milk, we would have poured it out the worst smell and got worse the entire weekend. Early on Saturday morning, the air conditioner kicked off because it had been running solidly since Thursday. Hottest weekend of the summer and this odor that you couldn't believe. Now, Dave Popperwell and Left Brain, what's, what's the problem? They played golf, tennis, golf, badminton, golf, so they're outdoors. Poor Patty Popperwell had said to me the fifth time, I'm gonna walk over to the mall. <laughs> I passed her one time, she said, I'm gonna take a nap. She had the window down with her head trying to sit out by the thing. A long weekend, now we consider them friends, but I thought the weekend, what are they saying? What must they be saying when they get in there and close it? What must they be saying? She's probably saying she's one of your speakers. I didn't even know her. <laughs> And finally, on Monday morning, the Papa Wells got in their rental car and drove away. Oh, I, before I die, I want to know what they said in that car. And I appreciate y'all coming for me to tape this story, and I noticed that you're staying at a hotel. <laughs> and I don't blame you. I do not blame you. The left brain who had mumbled to me all, all weekend, they won't notice it. They don't notice it. You can tell. They're very nice people, but they have not noticed this. They're not going to notice it. <laughs> The minute that car pulled out of the driveway, he said, let's get on the deck. I can't go back in that house. <laughs> Sitting there, he said, I don't think they noticed a thing. I said, let me tell you something. Is that why Dave Popwell asked us if we live near a swamp? <laughs> and then, <laughs> Left Brain said to me, a professional speaker who makes her living doing, hopefully about every other day, what I am doing here tonight and said seriously, well, don't tell anybody. 